I am always open to meeting new people. I never say no to any opportunity. So I was like, sure, I'm, I'm going to meet. It was an investment banker with 17 years of experience in all the top banks, HSBC, UBS. He told me, Amar, you've got a lot of potential. I think you don't belong here. You should come to Dubai. I was 19 years old at that point of time. In a week, I took a flight. I went to Dubai. I met him. He gave me a $10,000 account to trade with. And he was like, you know, why don't you try your hands on it? I think I made around 20% ROI on that in the first month, which was, I think, mind blowing for him because, you know, investment bankers, these guys are used to like 5, 7% returns in a year. A lot of people ask, me that I struggle with trading discipline. I struggle with patience. And I tell them it has nothing to do with trading. My friend, you're impatient in general. You're indisciplined in general. Folks, hope you had a great Christmas and New Year period with friends and family all around the world and you'll get up for 2024, right? We've got a great interview coming up here in a second along with a video that we shot afterwards where he breaks down what he does on a price chart. So folks, that's all coming up here on Trading Nut along with a ton of other cool stuff here in the new trading year. So stay tuned. You don't want to miss any of this. Hit subscribe, like, and that notifications bell, and be sure to stay tuned on Trading Nut. All right, folks, let's dive into the interview after hearing from my sponsor. Our sponsor, Blue Guardian, is the only prop firm that gives their traders a tool to protect them from hitting their max daily loss and over trading. It's super simple to use. Just set the Guardian protector each day from your dashboard. Did you also know that they've just released an unlimited time evaluation with a zero trading days requirement giving you plenty of time to hit their low 8 and 4% targets, making it super fast to get funded. Plus, it's cheaper than the 40-day time limit evaluation. Check out the link and coupon in the description to get 10% off your next Blue Guardian evaluation. All right, folks, we've got Umar Punjab here in the sh in the house, uh, all the way over there in Mumbai, India. I think you might be the first trader I've had calling in from India. Is that so, really? Um, yeah. uh, I'm really excited to be here. Yeah, well, look, I'm, I'm glad... I'm Glad to have you on because I know you've sort of gone through quite the the journey and got quite the story to tell, especially around the fact that you didn't originally trade Forex and you actually now have transitioned to that in the last year and a half. So we're going to get all of that um, in this little show. So to start off with, how on earth did you get into trading? So uh, it's actually a very interesting story because, you know, nobody ever in my family got into the financial markets ever. So I was with I was the first one in the family, in the entire family. And uh, it all started off because of uh, my economics professor. One day he was just talking casually about, uh, when I, I think this was when I was 16 years old. He was talking about the stock market. He was telling us about a stock named Gillette. At that point of time, it was one of the most expensive stocks in the Indian market. And that really intrigued me, you know. And at that point of time, I was doing some side hustles around the fitness area, uh, selling eBooks and coaching people online. And I was like, I've got some money. Why don't I, you know, put something into the market? And that's how I got into the uh, markets. Okay. And so, so what was your sort of first foray? So you put some money on a stock. Makes sense. I mean, I, I think I know a lot of guys that did it when they're about sixteen in, in my friend group. Now, what did you do after that? Did that was that sort of how did that spur the whole thing? So uh, when I got into the market, obviously I did not know anything about it. Then I tried to educate myself. The very first book that I bought was The Intelligent Investor. And uh, I'll be very honest, I didn't understand anything. So uh, then I got to the lower level. I got Rich Dad, Poor Dad. And then slowly, slowly, I understood that there's something called a short-term trading as well, where you can just, you know, open a trade on the same day and close it on the same day. I tried doing that. Obviously, I was uneducated, so I lost a lot of money as well. Uh, but not in a absolute terms, not a big amount of money. Obviously, I was 16. I didn't have money to lose. But yeah, that's that's how I got a little bit into the trading from investing side. And what was your, and so you were purely just trading stocks at that point in time. You didn't like sort of branch out to anything else. Not really, because honestly, uh, I never knew something else existed because I only knew about the stock market. In the Indian stock market as well, no, not the not other US stock market, all that sort of stuff it was literally the Indian stock market. Absolutely. So, so I mean, I'm guessing. I mean, I'm like, I'm only guessing here, but I, was there much education around? I'm guessing there probably was in India for for trading the Indian stock market. And did you manage to capitalize on that and get get educated? So there was not really much education, you know. Uh, it was only books, just books that you can rely on. So I got a bunch of books, uh, you know, about candlesticks, about technical analysis, but. Uh, everybody knows you can't learn technical analysis in books. I mean, you have to sit in the charts. You have to get things done practically. Uh, but uh, I tried my best. I, most of my journey was trial and error because honestly, there was not much. There were some, you know, uh, YouTubers and creators on the internet, but not really where I could find everything that I needed for my trading journey. I, it was all about, you know, collecting bits and pieces of information from wherever I could, whether it's articles, whether it's YouTube videos, anywhere. And I was hungry to learn. So I was picking up whatever I got. 
And what was the first thing that resonated with you? So the best thing, you know, that I loved about trading was first, I didn't have to deal with people because I, I was, I used to be an introvert at that point of time. I didn't like to, you know, deal around with people. And second thing, I didn't have a boss. So those two things, you know, uh, I really loved about trading because this could give me, you know, the freedom I was looking for. And uh, I had to do it without dealing with people. And, and what, what age were you at that point? I was uh, somewhere around 16, 17. Okay, right. So you literally are thinking, right, I'm not even going to go get a job. I'm just going to do this. This is going to be my my income. I mean, how how did you get to the point where you were like, you know, started actually making money from it? Or was it just like one of these miracle, like I started working from day one? No, no, absolutely not. Uh, actually, I was studying while, you know, while I was getting into all these uh, this trading because I come from a very humble background. And uh, if I decided just to go into trading, my parents would not be very happy about it. So Obviously, they would want me to pursue studies and get a degree. So I was doing that and side by side, I was getting into trading. And then I think it took me around two, two and a half years to finally see some money from trading, obviously, because uh, due to the lack of education around doing trial and error, it just lengthened my journey a little bit. But uh, yeah, that's that's how much time it took me. And if you had to describe your strategy at that point in time, when you're starting to make money, what what did it look like? So at that point of time, when I was trading Indian markets, it was all about, you know, because initially when I started off, I lost a bunch of money and there was one day when I borrowed some money from my mother and uh, she gave me, she was nice enough to give me some capital and I lost 50% of it in the first day, you know, and uh, that's when I decided this is enough. I've had enough. It's time I take my journey seriously. It's time I take risk management seriously. You know, I know uh, I start to take things one step at a time. It's fine if I trade with a small capital and make some small amounts of money, but it's the percentage that matters. Uh, that's when I really decided that was a defining moment for me, actually. And uh, as far as the strategy is concerned, I've always been a fan of, you know, simple support and resistance, simple, simple things, actually, uh, price action. Uh, and uh, mostly in the Indian stock market, that that works very nicely in uh, the equity stocks. And, and were you like, I mean, I suppose you, you're doing that for, for how long in terms of the, the trading Indian stock market? I, I mean, think around uh, two, two and a half years. Right. Okay. And so at that point, after two and a half years, you're kind of thinking like, I want to move to Forex. Now, why on earth were you thinking that? What was going on? So actually, uh, when it comes to the Indian markets, there's been a lot of regulations. There's been a lot of changes, you know, that have come over the years, which have made it really difficult for a trader to trade in. Now, obviously, there might be people who will say, uh, you can still trade. I have no doubt about that. But I, I like to position myself in a way where I am positioned to win, right? And in the Indian markets, I'm not sure if you know, uh, Cam, but uh, leverage is actually banned in Indian stock market. So you you cannot you, you cannot take a lot of leverage in Indian markets, you know? And uh, that's just, you know, very difficult uh, to be in any market if leverage is actually not there. Then uh, slowly, slowly, they have extended the time of the markets. And now Indian markets are not as huge as forest markets, you know? So the liquidity uh, is becoming a very big issue because if you take a small market and then you stretch it over the time, obviously the liquidity is going to suffer. So looking at all these things, then obviously the taxes that are there in the markets, they are, they have been increased as well. So looking at all these factors, I understood that, you know, this is something that is not good for me as a trader in the long run. So I should definitely explore something else. And when I saw Forex and I saw, you know, the kind of leverage you could take, the kind of convenience, the timings, and all those things, that's when I decided, you know, this is something that I want to get into. Okay. So, so let's, let's walk you through, oh, let's, can you walk us through the transition from, you know, Indian stock market, the Forex, what are the differences? I can imagine there are like plenty. How did you navigate that yourself? So, uh, fundamentally things are pretty much the same because obviously it's price action. It's all the charts, but it's all actually about the technicalities, you know, and a lot of people ask me this, that how do you make that transition into a different market? And I tell them that you first categorize the things that are same, that are similar in the markets. And then you also categorize the same things that are different. So it's the different things that you really have to focus on because that's something you have never done before. Uh, it's, it's as good as, you know, you, you've learned to swim. Now you want to learn a new stroke. So fundamentally, you know how to swim, but that new stroke is something that you need to just add on to your knowledge, right? So mm. for me, it was more about the timings. Uh, something that I really struggled with was understanding pips and lot sizes, because uh, that's not how we trade in the Indian market. It's completely different. So 
over there i took some time to understand then position sizing was a little bit of a uh, numbers game for myself and uh, once i figured that out then i realized it's pretty much the same right okay so so in terms of like the i mean time of day that you were trading i mean can you sort of walk us through the details of like what pairs did you pick because there's obviously you know you got tons of stocks that you can choose from but you've you know you also got a lot you know a fair chunk of pairs you could pick for the forex did you only trade forex did you trade cfds as well or or how did you get into it in in that way so uh, when it comes to the pairs i think uh, i was just like any other beginner getting into the market so i just took the top 10 15 pairs and uh, i was just uh, you know surfing through it through the charts uh, making my way out understanding how they work then slowly slowly i realized that they are somehow correlated there's some correlation between the pairs and uh, that's when i you know got this idea that i should be really focused towards just two or three pairs because eventually most of them are correlated so there's uh, it, you know it doesn't really make sense to trade so many pairs unless you're on the very shorter time frame so uh that's how you know uh, i made my way through the markets that's how i navigated through pairs and got a better understanding and would you what how would you sort of describe your kind of style of trading was it a swing trader scalper that what what sort of thing were you doing so since the very start i've been uh, preferring swing trading i've been always on the 4 hour 1 hour time frames uh, and uh, preferring swing trading and then eventually very recently actually uh, since a year and a half i've actually changed my trading style into uh, you know more of day trading or scalping if uh, that makes sense okay okay so so the stock market was more swing trading the forex is more day trading intraday i mean like it, it just from from my sort of mind it it does seem like it could be quite a difficult transition because i mean forex is typically mean reverting and stocks are typically just you know buy and buy and hold kind of things I mean how on earth do you sort of navigate that? I mean were there any major differences in what you were doing or things that you sort of thought I've got to change that because it just doesn't work or how did you validate what what you did in the stock market was going to work in the forex market? Uh, that's actually a really good question. And you know uh, throughout this process I learned so much about myself because I realized that there were so many personality traits about me that I was holding back when it came to the Indian stock market which actually you know I was able to maximize in the forex market like uh, my personality i'm more of a impatient person okay now if if you take an impatient person and you tell them to do swing trading it's a very difficult compatibility you know it's very difficult to do that and i realized that this is some this is an area i've never explored because i never got the chance to right and when i came into the forex market there are so many things i learned about myself that you know uh, going into the smaller smaller time frame going into the scalping or intraday uh, sort of style is actually more beneficial for me so uh, that was a, a really big change for me and obviously it took time it took a lot of uh, mental work actually more than technical it took a lot of mental work learning more about myself understanding you know what do i have to do differently because it's it's actually very difficult because you've been doing something right in a market now suddenly you're in a different market and now you also have to validate that what was i doing is it correct in this market as well and uh once again the differentiation really helped me a lot which was what do i have to do new here in the forex market which i was not doing there and i think that new part was pretty easy for me because i've been learning uh, i learned that from zero right like understanding pips and lot sizes that was something i learned from zero it was actually the thing that i learned already was more difficult because i had to first unlearn that and then learn this again which was uh, you know the london session sort of thing the timings the new york session all the timings understanding volume liquidity in the forex market so that was a bit a uh, bit you know of a challenge for me but uh, like i said i've been uh, a learner i've been hungry to learn so i somehow made my way to that yeah i mean because i, I suppose if I, if i was going into it i mean what i'd find what i'd struggle with is getting the confidence that what I was doing in the stock market was going to work in the forex market and getting hit out a couple of times where you know you I'm just going to follow what I did obviously and changing t- down time frames as well so which is even more like dramatic and and you've got the you know you've got the intraday sh- sessions as well you need to uh, uh, need to trade around i mean did you do any sort of back testing or something else to validate that what you were going to do or planning to do was actually going to work and what sort of metrics what did did you come out with that gave you the confidence so uh, definitely i did some back testing uh, and actually matter of fact you know i i discovered this concept called back testing 
when i came into forex market actually because i was really unaware you know my entire journey has been like uh you know a some a lonely man you know trying to grab whatever he can and i never really and uh, you know actually knew that back testing something back like back testing existed yes i definitely did back testing in indian markets without knowing what it was because oh, i used to you know b- go back to the charts and see you know whether this would work or not but then when i got into forex i educated myself i discovered something called back testing and uh, and i was like this is amazing you know why did i not do this earlier and then i decided to back test and uh, yes obviously i got uh, good response because support and resistance obviously it works in every other market and i just had to adjust a little bit when it, when it came to the forex market and i think one major thing uh, that i really learned about supports and uh, resistances when it came to the forex market is that uh, wherever you know the, if there's a if there's a chart and you know there's a very violent move upside or downside from from a certain region that is you know something that really works people also call that order blocks uh you know if you're aware so and that is something yeah. that really worked out very well for me hi hey folks what a view behind me i'm at blackpool markets headquarters here in auckland new zealand speaking of views you can get trading view paid plans for free at blackpool markets saving you up to $600 a year that's right get either the essential plus or premium plans absolutely free and all you need to do is trade from one lot a month at blackpool markets and you can also get a 100% deposit bonus for your first deposit up to $1000 all you need to do is click the trading nut link in the description below so so i mean like the can you um, can you work, walk us through like a typical trade you'd take on the forex on a forex market or whatever currency pair like what would that sort of look like time of day uh time frame you're looking at you know stop loss size take profit size getting out of that trade how, how would that look so uh do you do you want me to share my screen oh no no we'll, we, we'll do a screen share later on but i mean like if you want to just explain it you know just it's just at a high level i mean how would it look so uh i i have been trading only gold for the last one and a half years xau usd that's what i've been trading and my main focus is like i said it's pretty much simple support and resistance i love to trade the london session i uh, avoid the new york session it just doesn't it's just something you know that uh, i don't prefer because i have noticed that in the new york session zones just break left and right uh, without respecting much i'm sure there's something to it but the london session is something that works very well for me my stop loss size is fixed uh and my zone size is fixed so the the zones that i mark is 30 pips and the stop losses that i place is 20 pips so this is standard this is fixed so yep. this really helps me you know because i'm in the shorter time frame and in the shorter time frame if you try to do a lot of variations with zones and uh, you know lot sizes then it's very difficult to actually execute because So right now you're looking at the chart next minute you've got a trade and then in the next minute take the time you calculate the zone and the stop loss and the position size the trade is already gone so this specification of you know having a standard lot size and standard zone size and stop loss size has really helped me a lot so that is something that uh, you know what my trade looks like in terms of specification in terms of the strategy it's simple support and resistance i execute my trades in the 1 minute time frame obviously i it's multiple time frame analysis uh very obvious but uh, i hold you know my trade typically my trade lasts from uh, an hour to 2 hours or 3 hours maximum not more than that and what kind of reward would you get from a 20 pip stop on average so uh easily uh, i think the minimum that i aim for is around 40 pips sometimes uh, i've got an 80 pip sometimes i've got a 120 pip so that's what a you know decent winner looks like for me Okay, cool. And and so like would you ever scale out of position or or get out early, move stops to break even that kind of thing? Yeah, absolutely. Uh especially with gold, I mean, you know, gold is extremely violent. So I I my first priority, you know, whenever a trade moves in my favor, my first priority is to move it to break even. So I'm I'm safeguarded. It's funny, I I'm just going to mention this it's, it's not really a question, but it's funny that people say, "Oh, yeah, I'm I'm now trading forex," and the reality is they're trading gold, which is yeah. the the correct answer i suppose is it's a cfd on the on the gold commodity is that 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 would be it and it's not even pips anyway is it it's like it's, it's the numbers are sort of blown out from pips but everyone sort of calls it forex which is if you're new to this then you want to know that kind of stuff yeah. um right now uh okay cool so that's your that's your strategy now how how often would you like tr- get it find a trade with this 30 pip zone across the course of a trading week Uh, I would say, you know, in uh, the London session, 
I, I think thrice or four times a week is something that I look at very decently. I, I usually avoid Mondays and Fridays because I've noticed that uh, the London session for Monday is really illiquid. And then the US session for Friday, a Friday usually gives irrational moves. I mean, this is something that I have observed. So mostly I avoid Mondays and Fridays and this is the midweek that I love to trade. And, and how long are you going to sit down at the charts for in a day? If, you, if you're just trading London sessions, obviously, you know, only a short period of time. And so what, what, what is that? How does that interrupt your day and how long are you sitting there for? So, uh, it's just, it's, it's actually very convenient because, you know, I've been, I've been trading for almost five years now. And, uh, when, once you do do it for a long enough period of time, it just becomes part of your lifestyle. So, it's just that, you know, before sleeping or, you know, once I wake up, I just have my zones very clear with me and then I carry out with my day. Whenever I see, I have set my alerts, whenever I see the zones, you know, coming to my charts, obviously I sit down, I plan everything out, the execution and all of that. I take the trade and then, yeah, that's, that's how it goes. And you know, so you mentioned that the fact that, you know, it was good having fixed, you know, 20 pips stop loss. So you could easily go, well, my lot size is always going to be this, and I just put the trade in. I mean, can you talk us through what happens on that one minute time frame that uh, that means that you it's so hard to get that trade in? You've got so little time, which I look. I mean, I I know you. I, I've had this problem myself, so I'm interested to hear how you sort of got around it. And well, I know how you got around it, but how what the reason is that you can't, you don't have enough time to go. Well, what's okay? What's that? You know, one percent of the account worth in lot size and let's get the order on and put the stop in and all that sort of stuff. So I think uh, what I like to do is uh, I've actually built a confirmation system for myself where I have got my, you know, factors very clear, parameters very clear that if this is going to happen, this is the amount size that I'm going to enter. If this is going to happen, this is what I will do. If this happens, I'm going to wait. So I've built a very uh, in-depth confirmation system. So most, mostly, most of the time, you know, when a zone is being touched for the very first time, most of the time gold is going to respect that because gold, if you, if you look at gold, gold is something that doesn't break off a zone without touching it twice minimum. It touches twice. So this, just, that's just how gold behaves. So when, it, when a zone is being touched for the very first time, I love to set my limit orders. So, because most of the time I know it's going to be respected. And that's just my confidence throughout my back testing. So I like to sell set limit orders. If the zone is being touched for the second or the third time, that's when I, you know, I really have to sit down and, you know, I really have to uh, look at the chart. I really have to look at the candles that are being formed on the one minute time frame and then execute because uh, there's a very high chance that it, the zone could be broken when it's being touched for the second or the third time. And so, so uh, like with your 30 pip zone, I'm just trying to picture it in my head and we'll obviously jump on a chart and have a look at it in a minute. But, um, so would you be like going, okay, well, my 20 pip stop, 30 pip zone, my stop, my stop loss is actually going to be above the zone. And will it be like massively above the zone? Or is there something else you're looking for specifically in there to to get you in so that, you know, if the top of the zone gets touched, you were we are well and truly out of that. But because you had to get in into the trade further as it came into that or out of that zone. Yeah, that's actually a very interesting question because uh what I've done is I've also built a layering system for myself so that I can maximize the zones, you know? So I've, 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 uh, so it's, it's a 30 pip zone. I divide my position sizing into three parts. So let's say if the zone is like one, nine, three, six, one, nine, three, five, one, nine, three, four. Okay. So I'm going to divide, let's say 33% in three parts of my position sizing one, one, one like that. And so even if the price comes, takes just one one uh, layer of the zone and goes back i am still in if it takes two layers one uh, amazing takes three wonderful and that really helps me out to you know uh, tackle this problem of entering and so so like i mean we've had traders on here before which uh, who do this approach of like you know that's layering in with the you know i suppose the last position is, is only going to lose a little bit right out of the 33 percent. so it's got a quite a tight stop the downside, because I've actually built robots on this, and and what I found was the downside was if you only get those first entries, uh, you know, all the time, and then you might get three winners in a row, and then all of a sudden you get, you know, three stops in a row, and it's like, oh, I've just had like, you know, it's just destroyed the the fact that you didn't have enough going into that first trade. I mean, have you experienced that at any point in time? Absolutely. Absolutely. This is one of, this was actually one of my biggest challenges when I was, you know, building my trading system when it came to gold. And, uh, 
uh, how i tackled this was by by you know building a certain risk management system which really helped me out and then eventually i realized that if i want to trade this system i really have to focus more on the accuracy rather than the uh, you know win ratio risk risk to reward ratio because if i'm more accurate if i'm winning more then obviously it's going to increase the profitability factor so this is once again one of the few strategies where the win rate matters more than the risk to reward ratio yeah yeah now definitely definitely and and so landing on gold why did you land on gold only out of all those forex markets you could be trading why was it that like i'm just going to trade this one so uh, actually uh, i've tried a lot of things you know uh, going through the indian markets then going to crypto then going through the forex pairs and everything one day uh, i just saw uh, some some random telegram channel uh, and uh, you know i just joined just out of curiosity to see and i saw that guy was trading just gold you know and i've talked about this in my one of my videos as well and i was really intrigued i was like uh, i mean this guy is making really good money he has a really good win ratio and he's trading only gold so uh, let me let me also give it a shot let me also just you know just check it out you know before i put any money let me at least back test it and it's like you know it's like knowing a person if you know a person for long enough you know how they're going to react to certain things you know what their behavior is going to be mm. to certain things right similarly i studied gold so much that i understood that you know what gold's reaction is going to be to this particular zone or this particular news or whatever and i just realized that i understand gold better than anything else and you know when you focus on just one thing and just only one thing it really makes you aware about it so much Uh, you know instead if you're focusing on let's say five pairs for example so if i'm trading only just one pair and only one pair and let's say if i take 100 trades on that i'm going to know so much but let's say if i take 20 trades and five pairs uh, combining to 100 trades i might not know as much mm. so i understood that and you know that's when i decided that this is something i really understand this is something i would love to stick to and let me see where it takes me so i decided to give myself six months I traded gold for six months, and you know it turned out really profitable for me. And since then, I haven't stopped. Cool. I mean, it's it's funny you say that because it is like very much. Well, what I just trade all the pairs, but then I th- I mean I think there is a mental load that you need to deal with, especially if you're going down to the lower time frames and trading them. Yeah, because each pair has its own unique thing, and you know sessions and you know so for example, if you're trading AJ, you're going to be more Asia focused versus uh, EU, which is more sort of US focused, and and this kind of thing just i suppose is probably quite difficult for you to flick between or us humans to flick between so yeah for one focus on focusing on one pair is is a good thing to do or one one or two or three pairs max maybe is a great thing to do right let's um dive into some of the stats around your trading now so so uh you talked about win percentage i mean what does your win percentage look like at the moment so uh a very very recent uh funding account that i uh, cleared on that the win percent was approximately i think 69.75% to be very precise so yeah that was but normally uh, normally it is around 70 to 80% but yeah over there it went a little bit up here and there and uh what about like if you broke your average risk to reward down i mean what would be like your typical i'm getting out at xr what would that be So uh I re- uh, normally I look at 1 is to 1.5 maybe 2 if it goes beyond to it's a decent winner for me. Cool. Awesome. Now um what about your typical trading day? I suppose we we'll, let's talk about the whole day cuz I suppose London's coming in about midday for you, right? Correct. Uh so how does your day sort of progress from start to finish? So uh, my entire day uh, obviously I, I've been I've I've started off working on other businesses as well. So uh that's something i've been uh, focusing on because you know trading has just become one part of my lifestyle which nobody can take away now so it's just it's just there it's just existing so normally my day looks like i wake up i i head to the gym straight up and uh, after that i just uh, if i haven't already marked my zones i just take a look at the chart i mark my zones and then uh, if i've got any work i i wrap up that work and then uh, i you know i've got some time during the midday to just look at the charts and focus on on trading and then after that once that is done i uh, throughout throughout the day you know i've got meetings i've got uh, to de- a deal with my team members my partners and all those things and then by the evening normally i meet up with my team uh, regarding the other business that i've been building uh, i meet up with my team you know we have fun and then yeah by the end of the day uh, it's just me again looking at the charts probably and uh, 
but actually this is just a typical day where you know but i travel a lot you know the traveling is something that is now a staple uh, throughout my entire schedule so if i travel you know all of this goes haywire and i you know just try my best to uh, accommodate trading into that yeah i mean it's like, it is a it is a bit of a haywire thing isn't it because i mean like what what do you do how do you sort of how do you deal with the time zone change that the shift in like or oh, now I need to be at the charts at this time how does that all sort of come come about especially if you go somewhere you'd never been before you're going on a what let's say you're going on a holiday not maybe almost a holiday or a trip not where you want to go somewhere where you haven't been before you don't know the time zones and you're going to be all over the place do you just stop or do you carry on and do something uh, i think uh, one of my very recent experiences was uh, malaysia and uh, malaysia is still not too far off but uh, i think it's a 4 hour difference from uh, dubai to malaysia if i'm not mistaken but uh, you know when something like this happens that i haven't experienced before i always prefer to stop and take a step back because i just don't want to you know be going into something that i have no idea about into a situation and you know just end up losing a bunch of money so i think it's always best and that that is what i prefer to do take a step back try to understand you know how i can fit in into this situation and worst case scenario if i cannot you know it's just a week of no trading i mean what's the worst that can happen at least i'm not losing money yeah i'm going to ask you a bit of a weird question here so you you uh you've got obviously got quite a big following on youtube uh, 180000 i think following you you made that shift from stocks to forex or stocks and crypto to forex or gold let's call it gold uh, how did you how did you sort of deal with the fact that you could fail at this and you've got all these people like watching you and this big audience how how did that sort of come about in your mind that you were like i'm actually you know i'm i'm above the fact that this is you know i've got all these people watching what i'm what i'm doing so actually uh, the entire reason you know i started off my youtube channel was not never for views or never for you know getting people to like me it was actually just being that and I, as i told you earlier in the in a in a call i never really found that one source of information where i could get everything that i wanted you know it was all bits and pieces from here and there so i i felt like you know i can be that person for other people i can be that person especially for the indian markets because you know because due to the lack of education mm. uh, that's why i started off my youtube channel and actually it's a very interesting journey because for the very first year i had only 2000 subscribers but despite of that i was barely getting views but despite of that i posted every single week without fail every single week every saturday 9 pm indian standard time a video would go out on my channel without fail because i was very clear why i am doing it because i i didn't really care about the views or the fame or the comments i was doing it and you know one day i posted my uh, journey video uh, a video about my journey it has around 1 million views now and uh, that really blew off and because of that video my channel went from 2000 to 100000 in just a few weeks you know that really and that's when i you know realized that people actually follow me for my journey not you know you know not for the technicalities they actually follow me for who i am yeah. and what i do and i became very confident that you know if i make the shift i am sure people are going to understand and i did my bit of doing my best to explaining it to my audience uh, explaining them to as to why i am making the shift and why it makes sense for them as well and i think it was not a huge struggle actually because you know for a normal normal creator who's you know just been uh, focused on one particular market it would be a great struggle because that's what they're known for but for me i was known for my journey i was known for you know who i am and i think that it played a very big role for me to you know easily shifting into the forex markets and it was not really a big problem and i'm really thankful for my audience because uh I really didn't find any major struggles shifting to forex as a creator as well because yeah, they supported yeah. me throughout. That makes it that makes sense. Yeah, so it wasn't like, you know, you you're hanging your hat on the on the best stock trader in the world and you know, I'm going to move to forex and and uh, and be the best forex trader in the world. It was more about the journey. Now, um what about like what do you think made you different from other people you come across? I know you've got a ton of mindset stuff on your channel there. What do you think has got your mindset in a way that's not, you know, your typical man on the street out there so i think one of the main things uh, throughout my life you know uh, you've when we grow up you know when when we're seeing our sur- surroundings we grow around things that okay okay this is the guy i want to be like this is how i want to be like i come from a very small town in india you know uh, where it's it's a very 
it's as good as a village you know as good as a village so i have been growing up around an environment where i have learned what not to be like right if if you get what i'm uh, yeah. what i'm saying so throughout my journey you know around the people i knew that you know this is not what i want to be like i don't want to be so miserable financially mentally physically that's that's how i grew up so i knew what not to do and i think that played a very amazing role throughout my journey because when you know what to do you know there's a certain image in your mind and if you achieve that you're satisfied but when you know what not to do what to do is just an open area where you can you know just play around and become whatever you want so i think that played a very major role and i'm really grateful for you know all the tough times that i've gone through because that helped me to understand what not to do even when it came to trading and when i looked at uh, other youtubers when i looked at you know the education that was being provided i had that gut feeling you know that this is not what i want to be like this is not what i want to do and that's how i've found my way across to become the person that i wanted to just keeping in mind what not to do right and and for the for the people that are following you and you know the, the guys listening here today guys and girls listening here today what 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 would you recommend if you were saying look here's some steps to get into like a place where you're becoming profitable trading these are the steps I'd recommend you take what would they be so i think one of my very uh more very important advices would be to have an income source apart from trading and i think very few people understand the importance of that because when you're relying only and only on trading and you're not profitable it takes a very big toll on your mental health very big toll because then you're pressurized to make money right and trading is something you cannot do under pressure especially if it's a pressure of making money and feeding your family paying your bills you cannot do that and one of my top advices would be to first establish an income source which is giving you money which is paying you money and even if you lose money in trading you'd be fine you'd be fine and uh, this is you know one of the biggest mistakes that i see all the young guys do that you know they're dropping out of college they're dropping out leaving everything and getting into trading uh, yeah i mean you're good you're uh, you're passionate you're enthusiastic that's good but you got to be realistic sometimes you know and i think building an income source which is going to pay you and continue to pay you whether you lose money in trading or not is a very big help I know that's also I uh, how I started off. I I told you that I was a fitness influencer and I was making some money through that. So that really is one of the most important pieces of advice because it gives you so much free mind space to you know actually explore, to actually trade, and in fact to actually switch a market and try new mm -hmm. things out. Because if you're just relied completely on your trading, and you know let's say if you're a profitable stock trader. you don't have the room to switch to forex because suddenly all your money is going to stop coming right so i think that's one of the most important advices that i can give to any trader out there who's trying to be profitable have an income source which despite whether you win or lose in trading should continue to pay you and and what about like uh, you know once they've got they they've got that established what would be sort of the next two steps to get them to the point where they're like on the journey there so i think uh, as as you're building uh, your income source continue to educate yourself about trading obviously that is always going to be there completely uh educate yourself about trading keep learning and then once you build that income source you you have to understand you have to do some personal finance stuff here you take out 10 or 20% of whatever money you're making from your income source put that into trading and you know pick a strategy pick a plan journal your trades back test it before you get into it and i think that's how you know uh that's the steps that i follow and that's what helped me out Now now you've got your own fund in Dubai is that right? Yeah. So so that so uh obviously you know you you've managed to get capital in the, in in from a fund, you know from others for the fund. You started with your own, you've managed to get yourself to Dubai. I mean like how did all this sort of come about from like a funding point of view? Were you able to raise capital to to help you get funded or or and did that happen through the stock market trading or did that happen through the gold trading? What was how did that sort of financial aspect work for you uh it's an amazing story actually uh, and you know it was uh, i think 2 years back 2 and a half years back when i was in india i was i just started off doing well in indian markets i was profitable and that's when I, my youtube also picked up and i remember uh one day i got a call i get a call from my uncle and he says that i want to make you meet a friend and you know, normally when something like this happens it's just people asking me for investment advice but 
you know i am always open to meeting new people i never say no to any opportunity so i was like sure i'm, I'm going to meet so i met the person when i met him it was an investment banker with 17 years of experience in all the top banks hsbc us ubs all the top banks and he told me actually that uh, umar you know you've got a lot of potential and uh, i think you don't belong here you should come to dubai so he didn't offer me a job he didn't offer me anything mm. but that was a, actually a very big jump for me because just a, i just met a stranger and he's asking me to come to dubai without offering me anything on paper but i was 19 years old at that point of time and i was like what other option do i have i mean if i stay here in india in this small town anyway i'm not going to grow so let me actually just take it give it a shot go to dubai worst case scenario i'll have to come back i'll come back no problem so i next week in a week i took a flight and actually that was the first time i've ever sat in a plane oh see until until i was 19 you know and, and i told you because i come from a very small town very humble yeah. background i never ever got out of my state till i was 19 you know and that's when i sat in an aeroplane for the very first time and uh, i went to dubai and when i went there i met him i think that's where he saw you know that i'm really serious i'm really about it i'm taking action because uh, i don't know many 19 year olds who have done something like this you know just a stranger meets you calls you to dubai in a week you're in dubai mm-hmm. so i think that's where he really understood you know that this guy i think he deserves an opportunity and that's when i think he gave me he gave me a 10000 dollar account to trade with and he was like you know why don't you try your hands on it it was his personal fund and you know when i proved myself and you know i think i made around 20% roi on that in just in the first month which was i think mind blowing for him because you know investment bankers these guys are used to like 5 7% returns yeah, even if it's yeah. in a year you know so they are very happy with that and him seeing that kind of returns uh he was like i think you deserve more and you know that's where you know i uh, really scaled up i really built my network but entirely if i have to give one thing credit it would be network you know i i built my network i was in the right uh, you know uh, among the right sort of people because i believe cam everybody works hard i think everybody works hard but it's just the opportunity and it's the network that really makes a difference so i think mm-hmm. the network did it all for me and so so I'm a, like, let's just put ourselves in there like you you're in dubai you got 10000 bucks to to trade first of all how are you like funding your your accommodation are you staying in a hotel or or an airbnb or whatever and, and is it costing you a fortune um secondly how on earth do you get this network from sitting in a room trading i mean did this investment banker introduce you to people or or what happened in that in that area i mean how did it all sort of come to fruition yeah so uh when i went to dubai obviously i didn't know anything about it i didn't have a bank account over there i was obviously as good as a tourist so yes i think for the first two months i stayed in this hotel called i think arabian dreams it was a very funny name uh, i stayed there for i think two months didn't cost me a lot of money uh, i think it was still cheaper than the typical rent that's there in dubai so i stayed there for i think two months and uh, there's as there's actually a, an event called the finance club event it ha- it happens in dubai as it's ha- happening again in, on the 19th i'm going to miss it because i'm in india but that event changed everything for me mm-hmm. because over there it's like a private event where all the hedge fund managers investment bankers all the top guys come you know and because i knew him i knew my my friend my guy he got me into that event and this is what i tell people that all you need is that one person because if you penetrate into their network it's all people just like them so i was able to get into that network and you know that event completely changed me then i met so many people and through them i met so many people and it just kept growing from there well wow, that's that's crazy what the one thing is in the back of my mind is how on earth did your dad know this guy or your uncle know this guy Absolutely. I mean that's a very valid question and this guy actually belong belongs from the same town where I come from. Oh, okay? Right. From same town. And uh, he moved out to Dubai 17 years ago, 17 18 years ago. So it was he was like an outlier, you know. He was like, okay, I don't belong here. I should go somewhere else and that's where he go. And he was just on a trip to visit his family here back in India. Oh, right. So he met my uncle. They were childhood friends and my uncle just spoke to him about me and that's when he said that make me meet this guy. Oh wow. What a what a what a chain of events. Um now let's let's dive in and and talk mindset. So I know you've got a little mindset uh, series you you run on your channel or you used to. Uh, what what kind of things, you know, do you do to make sure you've got the right mindset or if you've got students coming through and people you're sort of helping, how do you get them into the right mindset for trading? Have you got any hacks and tips and tricks? 
So I think uh, when it comes to the mindset part of it, and it actually helps a lot in trading directly. A lot of people ask me that you know I struggle with trading discipline, I struggle with patience, and I tell them it's not it's, it has nothing to do with trading. My friend, you're impatient in general. You're indisciplined in general because there's a quote that the way you do one thing is the way you do everything. Mm. So if you're disciplined in one thing, you're going to be disciplined in anything that, uh, else that you do. So I suggest to my people that you should, in fact, start developing discipline in small, small things that you do. It's it it can be as good as you know waking up and sticking to just cold showers, nothing else but cold showers. That's being disciplined to something, right? And once you learn how to be disciplined into just one specific thing of your life. then you can use that quality and you you can apply it to trading as well so in fact that's what i love to suggest to my uh, students and my audience that become disciplined become consistent to just one small thing first and then try to and the biggest mistake people do is that directly try to be disciplined in trading when they were never disciplined in anything else before so that's actually more of a difficult thing to do so this is something that i suggest it's it's great advice it is really good advice and i think that yeah if you can find i mean i've did the cold showers Years ago, I started it, and now I, I literally, if I don't have it, I feel like I haven't really. The day hasn't started, and I got some pretty cold showers here. Right, they're, they're not the, the, they're probably not the the Mumbai or the or the Dubai I'm sure. <laughs> shower cold shower. Um, but uh, yeah, I've missed something if I don't. But I've I've managed to transition that into being, you know, literally across the entire day, just every little thing is is almost regimented with. Discipline from from what I drink, what I eat, and all that sort of stuff. It, it does it does help. It sort of just feeds its way through, in in the hope that it gets to the trading aspect, which it, it thankfully has just started to. Now, um, if you would rec, if there was one thing you could recommend somebody spend the next month mastering, what would it be to help improve their trading? I think that would uh, absolutely be backtesting. You know. because i give this example so many times to my people if they're watching they're going to be bored listening to this again but you don't jump into a swimming pool without knowing how deep it is right so how can you jump into a trading strategy without knowing all the outcomes and all the possibilities so i would highly suggest that no matter what you're doing whatever strategy it is back test it at least on 100 or 200 trades minimum so you get a good idea good database of how this is going to react to that situation this news that time frame that time zone all those things and then it's just you playing around on a playground that you know how it works you know right you know how it works you just you just have to play now so i think back testing is something like i told you i discovered very later in my journey but i am one of the biggest advocates for back testing because it really really makes your trading journey so simple Awesome, awesome. Now, um, before we jump into the quick fire round and wrap this thing up, so you mentioned earlier you got you went through a funding challenge, uh, for a prop firm. What what makes somebody who's like you know got a, their own hedge fund decide? Oh, I'm going to go and do a prop firm challenge and and see how I get on. I mean, what what was the thinking behind that? So actually, it was just to experience it myself because a lot of my students, a lot of my audience, you know, they've been trying out this funded challenge. They've been trying out. So, uh, I really wanted to help them with that. and i believe that unless and until i have experienced something myself i cannot help somebody with the same thing so in uh, actually i just try to go through that funding challenge just so for the sake of helping my people out so that i i can understand the problems better i can understand what they're going through and then help them out ah okay cool and so what's the intention with that like have you got to the funded stage or are you still in it Actually, I started off very recently. I just I am just on the second stage. So basically, okay. I've cleared the eight percent, and now I'm on the second phase. Okay, cool. And and well, actually, before we get into the quick fire, so what about like running a hedge fund in Dubai? Can you explain what that looks like on a day to day basis? You know, I I always thought that running a hedge fund would be more about numbers and analysis and all of that. But to my surprise, I learned that it is more about people. Right. it is more about how you deal with people it is more about you know uh, the kind of people you are with the kind of people you are dealing with because in the end as a hedge fund you get so much information about uh, uh, i am not sure if i should say this but you get so much information about the market you get so much, so you've got all kinds of banks sending you reports in you've got all kinds of you know firms sending you reports in that this could happen this could happen and actually the trading becomes very simple at that point of time because you've got so much data all you have to do is just pick and choose you know what you're going to use for your for your benefit and then just use that on your strategy so 
uh it's like you know i am in a high profile kind of group where i'm getting all the high profile info and all i have to do is just apply what i'm doing so uh in fact it gets easier at this level it keeps getting easier and easier and easier because you're getting so much information you've got that right network yeah. so uh, when i say it's about more about people is about I, I, i mean that you know who are you in contact with who is giving you information yeah. and who you're dealing with right right interesting stuff all right let's dive into a couple of quick fire questions here and we'll wrap this thing up so uh, if you had to sort of send somebody in the direction of a rec- of a trading book or or some sort of resource where would you send them one of my top books is trading in the zone by mark douglas i think that changed everything for me uh what about like your preferred broker and trading platform what do you use look folks i know you want the answer to this question which broker is this trader using now the answer has been sponsored by black bull markets so to find the answer out you're going to need to go over to tradingnut.com find the show notes page for this guest and then all will be revealed yeah uh, if you could leave our listeners with one piece of advice what would it be one piece of advice would be trading is uh you know just a vehicle to get to the financial freedom goal where you want to get so master it try to understand how it works because until and unless you understand everything about something you cannot really excel in it so the priority should always be education and then money and then profit so prioritize education and so so you you're 19 when you started uh when you moved to dubai i mean how old are you now like this seems like quite a sort of journey for somebody who's quite young yeah i i'm 21 right now 21 okay 21 unbelievable right well look um before we wrap up what's the best way for uh, people to get hold of you so uh it's obviously my instagram and my youtube i don't post much anymore it's my instagram it's the alpha trader official so uh yeah i'm i'm pretty active over there i keep posting short form content about trading and educating people but i'm not sure whether cam whether your audience would be too happy about it because it's in hindi it's not uh, yeah. a lot in english <laughs> but yeah that's that's where you can reach me Well, I've got a lot of Indian uh, viewers here, so so I'm sure that they'll they'll be able to take uh, take the benefit of it. I I did try and listen to some of the videos. I've got to say, and I, some of it was in English, and then I was like, oh, man, I don't understand this. What's going on? I've lost yeah. track here. Oh, he's talking in Hindi. Um, all right, look look, a big thank you to Umar for sharing with us today. Everything we've discussed here, along with all the links he's just mentioned, are going to be in the show notes. Uh, we'll put a link below the video and in the podcast description. Just go and click on that; you're going to find it. And if you're on Trading Nut, just search for Umar in the search box on TradingNut.com. Until next time, I wish all my listeners trading happiness and success. All right, folks, there you have it. Interview done and dusted with Umar. Now, if you do want to see what he does in the price chart, go and check out the video we shot afterwards, all over there on the Trading Nut YouTube channel. Have a fantastic trading week, and we'll see you in the next episode.